Moses. But Moses went out to Egypt land and had to tangle with the ten gods of Egypt. And Pharaoh didn't let him go until the last god bit the dust. And finally when the firstborn of Pharaoh died, the Bible said the cry came at midnight. He called Moses and Aaron and said, get your wives and get your children and get all your livestock and get out of town. I got a team to tell somebody, you coming out if you got to come out at midnight. You coming out and everybody else has given up on you. God said you're coming out. And the Bible said they came out with a high hand. And way up at the foot of the line, there's some men carrying a box. And the box has some bones in it. And when the children ask, what's in that box? Somebody said, those are the bones of a man that God can use. And I came to tell you, just like Joseph said to them, this place is not my home. And this whole world That's where I serve. But let me tell you something. This is not my home. The road is going to be called. The trump of God is going to sound. And the dead in Christ is going to rise. And we who are alive and remain are going to be called up to meet him in there. And I want to be ready. I'm praying to be ready. I'm preaching to be ready. I just got to be ready. I've given up this world. I've given up this riches. I've given up everything. That I might go back. Does anybody want to go? And we must work while this day. Because night is coming. When no man can work. Night is coming. We, we gotta get our loved ones in. We, we gotta get our children off the street. We, we gotta get our families in. Time is winding up. And God's calling you to be a part of his dream team. God's calling you to be a person that he can use in this wicked generation, in this wicked world. He, he's calling, he wants to use you. He, he wants you to be a person that God can use. I'm through. When I, when I finish the message, y'all, I, uh, I sit down on the easy chair. And, uh, I, uh, and I guess I'm going, I was between being asleep and awake. I was watching this movie. And the movie was entitled Schindler's List. But it was the kind of movie you could catch up with real quick. I, you know, I don't know. But, but I could catch up with it. And so I, I finally soon realized it was styled in Nazi Germany. And Oscar Schindler was a businessman. He actually made screen door handles and, and the hinges and, and that kind of thing in his factory. But when he found out how the Jews were mistreated, he decided he was going to hide them, put them in his factory, and he was going to become a rich man. And man, did he become rich. He became so rich, he could no longer put his money in the banks. He had to build secret compartments in his house, under his bed, in the back of his closet, to hide his resources because he had so much. He never thought the tide would turn against the Jews at the way it did. And when, 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 when Hitler started sending Jews to the gas chamber, he, he decided, he just had a change of heart. He said, I'm going to take this fortune and I'm going to purchase whole boxcar loads of Jews. And I'm going to open up a factory in Switzerland. And I'm going to transport them to Switzerland and let them work for me in Switzerland. And he started buying Jews by the box of hosts. Mm. And, and, and he bought so many that he had over a thousand. And uh, he was doing all he could do. But the Allied invasion came. And when the Allied invasion came, he knew his name to go on the list as the Nazi sympathizer. And, and because of that, all the people in the, in, in the factory decided to sign a petition because they wanted the world to know how many people that this one man had saved by himself. And uh, it came time for him to leave. He, he, he parked his car on the bridge between Switzerland and Germany. He comes out to, to bid farewell to everybody that has worked for him. And, and while they're standing there, they come up one by one and they hug him and they thank him for life. Some father of the children said, you saved my life, you saved my child's life. Three or four years ago, they did a, a reef, a, a laying of the reef at his, at, his, at his tomb. They still lay a reef there regularly. But that year, it made it special because there were five generations standing before the grave. A grandson, a great-grandson, a, a, a son, a father, a great-grandfather. And they were all standing there to trace their survival. 
back to men by the name of Oscar Shin. I stand on that bridge and, and they come up one by one to hug him to tell him how much they appreciate what he's done. And finally his phone come. You know, they didn't have any money, so what they did the night before was they went through the camp and everybody had a gold tooth for gold filling. They actually pulled it out and they melted it down and made a ring for his finger. Right. And when his phone came forth with that ring in his hand and slipped it on Oster Shimmer's hand, he bowed over and started to weep. He was crying so profusely they couldn't understand what he was saying. And they gathered around him to hug him and say, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? And, and, and finally, they hear the muffled words, I, I, I could have done more. They said, what did you say? He said, he said I, I could have done more. I said, what do you mean? He said, we've done a head count. It's 1116 been saved. He said, but I could have done more. He said, you see this gold pen? That it gave me three Jews for this gold pen. And you see this gold watch? That it gave me five for this watch. And that car, I didn't need to keep that car, but that it gave me 25 for that car. And all these clothes that I kept, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I could have done more. I, I, I could have done so much more. And I'm standing there, I mean, I'm sitting in that chair, and I guess I nodded off because I heard the voice of the Lord speak to me. He called me by name, and I heard myself saying, yes, Lord, right down in my bed, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. And he says, you're going all around the country, and you're telling people that you want to hear me say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I heard myself say, yes, Lord, amen. God said, but suppose I whisper in your ear and say, but you could have done more. But you could have done more. I got up shaky. I walked to the house. I said, honey, I got to make a law that cannot be erased. I got to be an individual that God can use. He said, you could have done more. He said, think of how many times heart disease has taken members of your family. Your brother at 39. Your nephew at 39. Your sister at 50 had open heart surgery. Your daddy died of the congestion of heart failure. It runs in your bloodstream. And you've not been sick a day. You could have done more. When nobody else was able to go to college, I'd let you get a degree. You've never been to jail with one of your children. You've never had to go down and talk to the court. You could have done more. I thought about how much God had blessed my life. And church, my desire is to do more. I want my life to count for something. I don't want my living to be in vain. And the people in this room, God has been good to you all your life. You know what? Some people in this room have never been without a job. You got out of high school today and have a job before the week's out and you've never been unemployed. There are people in this room. God has met every need. You went to college and didn't even have no money. God just opened doors and made way. He's blessed you all your life. There are people in this room, if you're honest, can say, I can do more for the kingdom. I can do more for the kingdom of God. Does anybody want to do more? Does anybody want to do more? I don't know how much time we got left, but don't we want to do more than what we're doing? Don't we want our life to count for something? I want to be a person that God can use. Yes, 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 that was a wake-up call for me. And I, I thought I was doing a lot, but that was a wake-up call. Because he's given them a heart's desire. And he's blessed everything. I set my hands to him. And I came to encourage somebody. Don't waste any more time. You can do more for God. You can do more for him. You can do more for him. You can simply do more. I know, I, I thought you might look at me like that. But this is my last altar call. I am. Uh, and y'all know, I've been, I've been praying for y'all. I've, I've been trying to sing to y'all. I've been trying to preach to y'all. But tonight, this is my last altar call. Because it's so important that we leave the revival changed. 
want you to hear it tonight. When he says, come unto me, all you that labor got to have it later, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, Lord of me. You'll find out my yoke is easy and my work life. I'm going to ask you to come tonight. Those of you that, 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 that really sense and you desire to do more for God. You know, 